Now, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do, if you don't mind, is tell me a little bit about that movie that everybody always brings up. Oh, if I talk about that, I'll be talking about it for the first time in a way that makes me feel good. I, I mean, I like that movie. Are we, am I answering you now? Yes, but um, any way you say it is fine. <laughs> What's the first time that you heard anything about the existence of that planned movie. Marion Cooper. Uh, yes, we have to begin with him. Well, he was my good, 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 good friend, wonderful friend. And uh, when he first talked to me about uh, doing it, I was, I backed away because it, it didn't sound like anything I'd really want to do. And he said, you're going to have the tallest, darkest leading man in Hollywood. And then he told me something about the story of King Kong. But when he first told me, I was thinking that at that time about Cary Grant because I liked him very, very much. And I, having done a play with him in New York, well, who wouldn't? <laughs> but but, and, and then, uh, Cooper, just started walking through the studio, talking to me, me listening to him really. And we passed a little bit of a landscape garden scene that was going to be a setting for the King Kong, the miniature King Kong. And I felt kind of reassured because it was such a small little garden, it was only about 10 feet by 10 feet. Anyway, as we walked and talked, he said, I'm thinking about a name for this film. He said, what about Kong? How do you like Kong? I said, that sounds pretty good because that has an Asian flavor. And I knew he liked, he'd done films in Asia. And then he just added the other word to it. He said, Kong, King Kong. I think I'll call it King Kong. <laughs> and there it was, you know, it was just born right in that moment. I was, but probably a teenager when I saw it, um, and I remember being, yeah, it was just one of those staggering performances that just stay with you, um, and she was just so wonderful, and seen on the boat, which ended up not being such a great big scene in the movie, but I really studied her in that moment, where um, 
I think, uh, what do I say? Um, I think this is awfully exciting. I've never been on a ship before. Oh, I think this is awfully exciting. I've never been on a ship before. You know, um, that was her line in the, move, in the movie. And it's just it, how she speaks. It's like music. It's, um, it's so lyrical and, and um, the pitch is perfect and, and the movement and, and the eyes and it was, it's, yeah. So I totally ripped her off in that moment. It was a total homage to Faye. When I read her book, on the other hand, the thing that struck me most was that in real life, she was so much more interesting a person than she ever portrayed as a character on screen. I mean, this is a woman who was pursued by the literati. You know, Sinclair Lewis <laughs> was, uh, was enamored of her. Uh, not to mention the, the men she married, who were very good writers too. She hung out with a very high-toned crowd and uh, uh, very sophisticated, literate men uh, were smitten with her. I always gravitated toward writers because I, I liked the idea of being, having someone really to talk to, you know. There are some wonderful, handsome, leading men in, in motion pictures. And some in particular, I remember, were just so good looking that you could just feel, oh, 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 you know. <laughs> oh, isn't that terrible? <laughs> but, but, you know, you couldn't have had a conversation with them. That's true. I'm telling the truth. I, you know, the truth is, is one of the most beautiful feelings in the world to have, to be able to say the truth and tell the truth. Is, is exciting. <laughs> but but I, I, I always gravitated toward writers because they were interesting, they had thoughts to express and did express, and it was always stimulating, you know. There are a lot of girls like me. Not many with your looks. I can get by in good clothes, all right, but when a girl gets too shabby... No family? I'm supposed to have an uncle someplace. You ever do any acting? I used to do extra work now and then over on Long Island. The studio's closed now. What's your name? Anne Darrow. Fine. I've got a job for you. She is terrific in that movie, and she's part, a very important part of why the film is terrific. You know, she is Anne Darrow, who's being channeled through Fay Ray. She's the heart and soul of the movie outside of Willis O'Brien's animation of Kong. She is the other half of that equation. And it makes you cry. I mean, you cry when Kong dies. You're feeling very emotional. And the fact that Faye's there and there's tears streaming down your face is a, is a you know, it almost creates an intimate relationship with, between a 16-year-old viewer and an actress that doesn't really exist. But you're, you're emotional and it's a very private, personal feeling that you're, feelings that you've got at that stage because Kong's dying and you're so sad and, and so you, you're sort of forced into this intimate relationship really just through the power of the movie. Don't go to the camera. Let the camera come to you. And I thought that was good advice and I would take it myself because uh, if you're doing something that you believe in and it's honest and true in your own imagination the camera will find it. The fiction is that you have to work for the camera. You have to do something special for the camera. You don't. You just have to be true to the scene and the camera will find you. The camera will find you, I said. And I meant that. I still do mean that. And in many, many respects, she's, she's a first love. I mean, she is probably, you know, outside of a, of a couple of actresses who were in James Bond films around that time. I mean, certainly as a 16-year-old, she was, she was my introduction to what, you know, the charms of a of lovely woman, yeah. Okay, Faye. What, what, darling? We're on an adventure. We sure are. We're going back on the road. 
<laughs> I think we do have the most wonderful time. We just don't, don't, don't know what's, what's going to happen the next minute, do we? No, we don't know from moment to moment. <laughs> Why should we? <laughs> Time's too short. Yeah. <laughs>